<laughs> Bob, I didn't know you could still get up that high. I can't put my butt in that slide, but I got squeeze it like this. Oh, you too. Well, I guess we overgrown. <laughs> it's great to have a slide outdoors, isn't it? And you know what? It's great to do some barbecuing, some old-fashioned barbecuing outside, Bobby. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to try to do a little barbecuing, okay? Rotisserie. Rotary. Yeah, that's a little bit of a big word for me to say. I'm glad you said it. First thing we're going to do is light the charcoal. I've got some going, but I thought everybody wanted to see how to do it. This is called a chimney. See it? Looks like a, a chimney, Bobby. I stuffed some papers in here. It's got a little metal contraption to catch the charcoal. I put some charcoal on top. And now you say, oh, you can't start a fire on a table. Well, this is a real safe way of doing it. If I can just figure out how to use one of these uh, gizmos. I got it started. And now what people won't understand is they can actually start charcoal, Bobby, in this thing and build it up to temperature. And it takes less than about 20 minutes, as you know, as I've shown you before, it takes 20 minutes to get this charcoal hot. Look at that smoke coming out of there. Everybody knows where there's smoke, there's fire. Or if you don't have one of those, you can always build the charcoal into a pyramid and put some uh, paper on the bottom. Yeah, what that means is spread it out on the bottom, uh, put some paper on the bottom, make a ball of paper, and spread the charcoal over the top where it goes all the way to the top. And when you light it, all of the fire, all the heat goes straight up. It stays nice and compact. And it'll make a fire real fast. This is the best thing I've ever seen to do it with, though. You see how this thing is smoking? I'm already getting a fire, and you'll be amazed how quick it, it goes. Okay, we're going to use an old charcoal grill with some fresh wood, Bobby, and I'm going to take this lawn of pork, put it on my, uh, my, my skewers. It's a huge skewer, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I'm going to put it over the fire and let it turn automatically. I have an electric, electric char uh, skewer here, and it'll turn it for me. You know, a long time ago, Bobby, when I used to go trout fishing, I used to catch trout and cook them over fire the same way. Of course, we didn't have all these fancy gizmos. What was it, like 1890 or something? Well, a little after that, but sometime around then. So what I've done is I've built a fire already in here, Bobby. And I've got some great hot charcoal in here. It's hot. And I'm going to take my, my grill top out, and I'm going to put some wood in it. This is pecan wood, Bobby, and I've already soaked it. And it's going to start catching, uh, smoking. It won't catch on fire because I smoked it, okay? Well, you can also smoke with, with wood like that, right? You can smoke with wood like this, and that's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to get some smoke out of this. I've got some hot charcoal. Look at over here. This thing, since I've been talking, is on fire, and it's going. Whee, doggies! <laughs> there you go, Jack. You know, that's a great way of getting a fire started, but I need this drip pan. You know what I'm going to do with a drip pan, Bobby? As I'm going to catch all of my things on fire. Good I'm thing we had the fire extinguisher. I'm going to use this as a fire, use a fire extinguisher, Bobby. I'm not using it. Well, okay, I'll put the fire out anyway. It's okay, we don't have that big of a fire. Not yet. I've had bigger fires than this in the firehouse. But always have one of these around just in case, you know, you know in case Jack comes to your house, to make sure you fire. have one of these fire extinguishers, you know what I'm saying? Well, we didn't That's get That's why he owns Jack's firehouse. Yes, sir, that way we can have big fires. So now we're going to put this on. I put the drip pan in there to catch all the juices, Bobby. So I'm going to make the sauce. I'm going to make a juice after cooking, okay? A what? A juice. Just to go over top, it's kind of a flavor enhancer. This is going to have great flavor because we're going to marinate a little bit. Or not marinate, but we're going to uh, moisten it the whole time. Need a hand? Yeah. Can you just stab that side? Well, you no, know, turn it around the other way. you got to stab it. See? Pick it up. Pick it up. Get it underneath the bones. Push it in, tight. Uh-oh, you can't get it in? That's good. I like to have it in tight so it doesn't move around. You gotta do it on both sides. Uh-oh, it takes a second to do it right. Take your time, make sure you get it in good and tight. That's fine. Oh. See there. I make sure it's all the way in, Bobby. See here? Caught here, let me loosen this up just a touch so we can get it on in. Okay, now that we have it on, I'm going to turn this over, Bobby, and you're going to put together a little uh, rub for me. Yeah, yes? we're going to make like a sort of a, a dry marinade. Yes. Okay. We're going to use some fresh rosemary. Rosemary has a really strong flavor, but it's going to be great. Rosemary and pork is wonderful. If you can't find rosemary, you can use something like thyme or some fresh sage. We're going to take uh, some cracked black pepper here, some brown sugar, and some fresh celery, and some fresh uh, crushed garlic. We're going to throw this together. We're going to take a little uh, red wine vinegar and some uh, peanut oil, just a little bit. I'm going to put a little more fresh black pepper and some more salt. 
We're going to mix this up. Get the rosemary in there. Rosemary comes off really easy off, off the branches. You just kind of pull it the opposite way. Okay. And just get it in there. You got that going? I got Can it Can I start mopping that now, Bobby? Absolutely. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to let this thing cook. Let's go over to the Put grill. Put some salt. Oh, I'm you got this thing up. working. Hey, it's amazing how this thing works. I'm gonna put some salt on it, Bobby, and it's just gonna start turning. I get some of this marinade. Oh, that looks great. Looks great. See, I got great smoke coming out here, Bobby. Fantastic. Got great smoke coming. Now you put, a, you put a drip pan in there. A drip pan in there to catch all the flavors. And that's gonna make the natural sauce that we're gonna use on it. And it's gonna cook. Now this is going to take a while to cook, even though I've got a hot heat on it, Bobby. It's still going to take a while because it's just going to roast. It's going to be on the spit. And as it cooks, it'll get a little bit stronger, and it'll start holding together in the center, too. You can take a wire and put it right around the inside, and it would help make it stay on top the whole time better, Bobby. And the grill pan also helps from flare-ups. When, you, when, you, when, you when you're using a rotisserie for chicken or pork or anything that you're going to have, any fat that drips off, it causes flare-ups. What we're doing is Jack put a, 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 grill, um, a drip pan. A drip pan. Thank you very much. I'm helping you too. We put a drip pan in the bottom of the grill so it's not going to flare up. We're going to save all those juices and make a really great sauce. Yeah, well, it's just going to be a little bit of a juice underneath, but it's going to be really intense in flavor, okay, Bobby? All right. And I'll, to finish that juice off, I'm just going to use a little coffee at the end to kind of break loose some of the spaces. It's going to be like a natural red-eye gravy, okay, or red-eye juice, okay? You got that all over? And we'll keep basting that, Bobby. I'll make a little bit more base, and we'll keep basting it. That looks but great. But that's just going to keep going. It's going to take about 40, 45 minutes before that's finished. And in a couple minutes, we'll come back, Bobby. You can start stuffing your pork. We'll let mine go. Look at that smoke. Oh, boy, it's going to have a lot of flavor, Great isn't smoke it? flavor. Great smoke flavor. When we come back, you can do your pork on. And when you finish that, then I'll pull mine off. We'll slice them down, and we'll be chilling. Sounds great, Jack. Stay with us, everybody. When Mario walks into a kitchen... Grilled, steamed, roasted... He's always colorful. The most varied... He cooks deliciously. The most interesting in flavor... And he's always true to tradition. And they use this all the time in Italy. Because for Mario Vitale... Looking at the older techniques of Italian cuisine... The culture of cuisine... The bones of the dead... Is everything. Gnocchi alla Romana. Molto Mario. Next on the TV Food Network. For tough jobs you thought only a dishcloth could do, try new Bounty Rinse and Reuse. One sheet is so durable, it keeps working till the whole job's done. Rinse and Reuse has extra thick quilting for sponge-like durability. To rinse, wring, and reopen. Unlike ordinary towels that wad up when wet. So rinse and reuse it till the job's done. Then throw it away. New Bounty Rinse and Reuse. What did you eat this weekend? A couple of burgers Friday night. Uh, a couple of donuts. Two tacos. Barbecue ribs. Uh, Chocolate cheesecake Saturday night. Some pancakes for brunch. <laughs> Gee, that's funny. I, I should have exploded about an hour ago. If you kind of ate your way through the weekend, start turning things around tomorrow with Kellogg's Special K cereal. Just 110 calories, not a speck of fat. If those delicious, slightly toasted Special K flakes, let your taste buds continue to enjoy. Start taking off what you took on this weekend. Make Monday Special K Day. Welcome to Betty's Ocean View Diner. I'm Betty. We work hard to make a good first impression. We gotta look our best all the time. If the waiters don't look clean, what are they gonna think about the kitchen? One waiter in a stained shirt and forget it. Our food makes really tough stains. Before, with the detergents we tried, we couldn't get this grease out. But now, with this new Tide with bleach alternative, I can really see a difference. It's gotta be clean. It's gotta be Tide. This is the best looking family on the block and I'm proud of it. Thanks for coming. To get a fresh mountain spring scent in your clothes, you could add mountain snow, wildflowers, or spring water to your wash. Or just wash them in new mountain spring tide. The same great cleaning, now with a fresh mountain spring scent. Try new mountain spring tide, but put along with regular tide. Share a race car with my husband? No, we don't even share shave creams. For me, it's pure silk. I love it. It moisturizes and makes my legs feel silky. Want a real experience? Then experience pure silk. Back 
I gotta get my knife nice and short, Bobby, because I put on a pork loin. Let's check this out. You know, you didn't think it was gonna work. Look at that. Wow. Wee doggies. And the Fresh pork, and I got juice underneath. I added just a touch of water while we was waiting to keep that juice going. Going to add some coffee when it's done, Bobby. Look how succulent that is. I could do a whole pig on that, but we just did the loin this time. We're gonna have some good eating. Looks great. That's Smells good delicious, our family, too. don't we? We're gonna slice that bad boy down. It's got that smoky it. flavor, too. It's yeah, really that, nice. That, that, we're doing a good job so far. What did you use, pecan wood? I used pecan wood in there. It's a soft, sweet wood. It adds some incredible flavors. We got the little rub on the outside that you helped me with, and we kept on basting it. Look at that. How long, how long are you going to have that total? Total time 35? will be 45 minutes, 40, 45 minutes, okay? I'm going to cook it close to medium well, Bobby, not completely well done. And you're going to do a pork, too. Oh, yeah, a different version. This is a Mesa Grill style? No, this is Bolo. Bolo. I'm going to do a pork tenderloin. We're gonna fill it with some tapenade. A tapenade is uh, is a, a paste made out of black olives. I have it made here. Some fresh garlic. Yeah. Some pine nuts. Yeah. Some parsley. A little olive oil. Mm, and then you just throw it all in the good. blender. It's delicious. You can actually, if you if you don't want to make your own black olive tapenade, you can actually buy it in the store prepared. But Bobby, this is so easy and so it's, simple. It's very easy. A little olive, a little garlic, a little pine nut, just a touch of oil in it. Delicious. It's great. Using olive oil. Lots of, lots, lots of garlic. Lots of garlic. A bunch of garlic in there. Yeah. Me, ah, smell that. Let me show you how to uh, butterfly a, a pork tenderloin. We have half of a tenderloin here. Now, that's a tenderloin. I use the pork loin, what we call a pork loin, right? This is like the filet mignon of, of, of uh, pork. And you're just going to stick your knife in here, and you're going to start making just even cuts. You're going to keep letting it go. You, you don't want to cut all the way through it. You want to open this up so it's nice and flat. Okay? Keep going, keep going. See that? See, now it's nice and flat like that. Now we can take the top and uh, Jack, will you do that? Before you do that, one second. I just want to put a little salt and pepper in I here. I got the salt. Make sure you season all the way throughout. And we're going to put a little black olive top and uh, right in here. Right in the center. Right in the center like that. Not too much. Is that enough? That's plenty. That's plenty. Because the black olives are really strong. You don't want it, you don't want it to take over the uh, flavor of the pork. And we're going to roll it up like this. Okay. See now, now it's now you have a pork ten, tenderloin filled with the black olive topping on. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a little red chili marinade on the outside there. We have some ancho chilies, some paprika, and some fresh garlic. It's going to pour this into the bowl. Then we're going to take some olive oil. Kind of just stir this around a little bit, just so it gets nice and uh, nice and wet. And you have the chilies in there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a brush. You have a brush for me? No. no Bobby, I'll let you down. I didn't carry on this one. That's okay. We'll use a spoon. Spoon work? We'll just take this plate. We're just going to sort of rub the chilies and the oil and the garlic on top of it like this. And what this is going to do, this is going to form a really great, delicious crust on the outside of the pork. The pork tenderloin is really nice and smooth, and the top of the night is the same inside of it. So what we want is we want a contrast of textures. So when you, when you bite into it or when you cut into it, you have the nice crusty red chili marinade on the outside, and then you have the nice succulent pork on the inside. You want to turn that over? I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to put some more on, on the bottom. And you don't, need to cut the, you don't need to tie this together either because it stays together really well. Okay. This looks good already, huh, Jack? It looks great. Now we're going to go over to the grill. I've got Gas red. grill. We're just going to put it right on like that. And you, you want to let this cook now, see if there, if there was no top and on inside, if it wasn't filled with anything, this would actually cook in, a, in, in short order. I mean, you'd probably let a pork tenderloin without top and on cook for about, about five to six, somewhere between five and seven minutes, because there's very little fat in the pork tenderloin, and it's going to cook really through it, and you don't want it to dry out. But since we have the, we have the, uh, the top and on inside, the top and on is keeping the pork tenderloin really nice and moist, you probably want to, you want, you probably want to let this cook for about seven to nine minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to close the grill. We're going to keep the insulate the heat in there, and come back over here. We're going to make a sauce for this now. Now, Jack, you've been... check my pork one more time, Bobby. Okay. We, we make sure it's okay. Now, this is rotisserie. It's almost like 
you know, it's almost like you're doing the chickens nowadays. I love when you make up those words, man. How do you say it? Rotisserie. Rotisserie. I don't but want to you... confuse anybody out there in TV world. Well, you know, they can put <laughs> these, uh, they can put these um, subplots uh, underneath the subtitles <laughs> where people can understand. But you know something? I can't cook. This is like you would do with chicken. You could do this with chicken. Chicken, duck, shrimp, lobster. You can even throw a lobster Anything. Like, yeah, this thing is great because it gets a great wood flavor. Much more flavor than uh, just a uh, broiler without any hickory wood or pecan wood or any kind of woods underneath. All right, so let that cook for a while because okay. it still has some more time. And, let, and Jack is now uh, <laughs> grilled off. A roasted pepper, uh, um, a yellow pepper. Right, thank you. He's grilled off a yellow pepper for me, and I'm going to use my blender. You know, uh, together we can make a whole sentence. You say part, <laughs> I'm going to say the rest. Okay? We're going to take some some of the yellow pepper. We've we've taken off the skin because the skin is blistered from uh, from it grilling. We've taken the skin off. We've it, taken the seeds out, it, and we've taken the stem out. It feels gonna real add, easy, Bobby. We're, we're going to add some roasted garlic and some saffron. Very Spanish. We use a lot of saffron at Bolo. Well, saffron comes from Pennsylvania also, Bobby. They okay. grow up there. Yeah, yeah, sure it does. So then we're going to add a little <laughs> bit of honey because, we, you know, we have the strong flavors. We have the strong flavors of the saffron and the roasted garlic. We're going to add some honey just to sort of balance it all out. I talk a lot about balancing flavors, and by that I mean, you know, it's sort of the flavors are very harmonious. There's not one flavor that's uh, taking over the dish. Okay, we're going to add a little red wine vinegar here for some acidity. All right, we're going to add some salt and pepper to this. I, we, I, Jack and I always use kosher salt. Kosher salt is wonderful because you can, you, can, uh, you can feel it in your fingers and you can just sort of crush it as you're seasoning. As opposed to iodized salt, it's, it's, sometimes it's harder. The granulated salt, it's hard to figure out exactly how much salt you're putting in something. Then we're going to put some fresh cracked pepper. Get the blender top on here. Let it go. And this is going to be like a, uh, it's going to be sort of like a vinaigrette. We put all the ingredients in here except for one. We're going to take a little bit of olive oil. We're going to, em we're going to emulsify this. Okay. Okay, so that's what I call the charred yellow pepper vinaigrette. Very popular with Bolo. We're going to come back over here and see how our pork loin is doing. We're going to turn it over. On the other side here, like this, and I have one that I've already been uh, that I've been grilling for about. This one's about eight or nine minutes. It's just about ready, so I'm going to take this one off. Okay. That looks great. Thanks. So now we have we have the we have the pork loin with the top and knot inside, and we have the charred yellow pepper sauce, and I'm actually ready to plate this. We're going to wait a little while for yours because it's still got a little I'll time let to you go. Finish. Okay. We got a little grilled zucchini here. That we rubs with some of the same rub, the, the grilled chili, the the red chilies, and the and the and the fresh garlic. Because so I think zucchini goes really well with this. We're gonna put this right in the middle. Because we're ser we're serving this family style. You got that big piece of pork. Yeah, Bobby, you have to. Okay. So Don't gonna... worry, the whole family will come for the pork, though. No. All right. So we're gonna take this. We're gonna take this tenderloin, and now we're gonna make sort of big slices of this. And you can see, the te the the top of knot is right in the middle, and the pork is just just cooked and you don't need to cook you don't need to uh, cook pork uh, to death anymore you just want to cook it around medium so it stays nice and, and juicy we're going to take some of the yellow pepper sauce and we're going to put it right on the bottom it's going to lay this right across the middle and you can see all the saffron specks in there and the saffron starts to open up on it you know it starts to sort of flower and give, give it that nice orange yellow color now we're going to put the pork tenderloin pieces right in here just medallions of pork sort of one overlapping the other Turn this one over. That's How's that look, dish, Jack? Bobby. Beautiful dish. Looks great, huh? We'll come back in a minute, and I'll pull out that roasted lawn of pork. I can't wait. And you're tired of wait waiting for that. I've been waiting a long time for it. It better be good. Bobby, if you take your time on things, you get a lot better result. I'll show you what I mean when we come right back. All right. Introducing Improved Hill Science Diet, the only pet food with advanced RDA system nutrition. So your cat will come alive with health. It gives cats an improved balance of vitamins and minerals for a healthy difference you can see and a taste she'll love, guaranteed. In fact, Science Diet is the number one choice of veterinarians for their own pets. So feed your cat new Science Diet from Hills for a healthy difference you can see, guaranteed. Lemon and Matthau. 
are national treasures. We are witnessing history here. I've seen history, it stinks. They're dancing. Oh, you moron, you don't even know how to dance. Romancing their way into your heart. I need to step outside. We are outside. Out to sea sails with laughter. This is the Brazilian creep. In Brazil, it's just called the creep. Oh. Out to sea. What kind of a moron are you? <laughs> Rated PG-13. Now playing only in theaters. Hello? Good morning, Daddy. Hi, honey. Ready for your presentation? Actually, Daddy's a little nervous. We know just what you need. Room service. You ordered me room service? Two scoops ahead. You're gonna be two scoops ahead. Nothing prepares you for a big day like the hearty goodness of two scoops. Only from Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Ready now, Daddy? I'll give you two guesses. Kellogg's Raisin Bran will start you two scoops ahead. At most furniture stores, you have to dance to their tune. But at Expressions Custom Furniture, we set your imagination free. With over 90,000 frame and fabric choices, you're sure to find a look that's you. Come on in and take advantage of Great Expressions choices at Great Expressions sale prices. Expressions. You'll find yourself in our furniture. Birds fly in flocks, fish swim in schools, and families watch TV in packs. You can now get Oceanic's Family Pack. Five great channels for only $5. Something for everyone in your family. The Learning Channel, Turner Classic Movies, The History Channel, The Cartoon Network, and Flix. Here's great food for thought. Subscribe now. The first 2,000 new subscribers will get an Ono Zip Pack free. So call Oceanic Cable today at 625-8100 and order the Family Pack. Five networks for just five bucks. Like, welcome back, everybody. The pork loin with the, with the top of that is finished. I put some grilled zucchini on here. I'm going to go back and grab some fresh herbs because I think it needs a little green. We're going to maybe find some sage. I think sage goes wonderful with pork. And while I'm doing that, Jack's going to talk to you about his uh, rotisserie pork loin, which smells great. I can't wait to eat it. So it looks great. Thank you, Jack. Look at this thing, Bobby. It is big, it is suckling, it's good. I've been having this little contraption turn it all around and around, and it's roasted off. And look at this thing. It's amazing what you can do. Gosh, that was real hard work. I could tell my wife that I worked real hard to do this and she'd have to believe it. Well, it's not that hard. We just did a little bit of work on it. The hardest thing about it was putting it on and taking it off, Bobby. And I'm just un undoing these screws. You could just run the rod straight through if you wanted to, Bobby. But, you know, I had to do a little bit fancy, I guess. And I just unscrew these screws here on the side. Now, I have to be careful not to burn myself. I know it's hot. Look here. Popped it right out. Layer right down. And now all I've got to do is slice it down, finish my sauce off, and we've got something that you, your tongue will just die trying to get more. Now, I hope I cooked this enough. What do you think, Bobby? You got a sharp knife? I've got a sharp knife. I've been doing Look at that big boy. Ooh-wee. That looks fabulous. That looks great, doesn't it, Bobby? And the second one is better than the first. Look at the moisture still just jumping out there. That's one reason I basted it the whole time. Look at that. Pork chops the extraordinary air. <laughs> How many syllables is in that That's word? 22 syllables, Bobby. <laughs> Look at this. And you know, now I'm getting on down on the end. Okay, Bobby? And I'm going to take it. Can I use this? I'll just put it straight on this plate. You sure? It's going to get kind of crowded. Okay. Now, well, it may get crowded, but it's very good. Look at that, Bobby. Ah, isn't that great? And I made an old southern sauce. It's called red-eye gravy. And we didn't have to use anything to thicken it up. Now, that's enough for us right now. And it's almost, you, can you get that off or you want me to show you? Why don't you do it? This is I'll a little bit hot. This. And look at this, Bobby. Ah, red-eyed gravy. You can't beat that any way you look at it. Just take a little bit of it, Bobby, and start putting it over top. Look at that. Ah, more, more pork. Now, this is something that anybody be happy to eat. And if you're not, you bring it to me, I'll be happy to eat it for you. I'm going to pull it a little closer and finish off. Bobby, you did a beautiful dish. Thank but you. you know, I don't know how you could beat this with a stick. See, this is this is definitely city. That's definitely country. Big and bold and country. This is big and bold and city. That's right. We could feed the whole city as much as I cooked here, Bobby. Okay. But we won't have to because I'm going to eat most of it myself. Well, that's the end of the show for today. That's all the time we have. Sorry we didn't have a little bit more time because uh, you can watch us eat this. For Jack McDavid of Jack's Firehouse in Philadelphia, I'm Bobby Flay of Bolo and Mesa Grill in New York City. If you're in our restaurants, make sure you say hello. If you want these recipes, 
We're going to show you how to get them. It's going to come up in a moment. This is just peace, everybody. Smoky Mountain Grill, Bobby. This See you later. is great. If you would like to receive a copy of the recipes that you've just seen, along with a complete recipe collection from this week's shows, please send a check for $3 for shipping and handling to TV Food Network, Church Street Station, P.O. Box 3399, New York, New York, 1008. Please include the name and number of the show, your name and address, and a $3 check. You only have to write once a week to get a whole week's recipes from the show. Or you can get them at no cost from our website at foodtv.com. Weeknights at 10.30 Eastern. Don't miss New York City's Bobby Flay and good old boy Jack McDavid for more gourmet grilling on Grillin' and Chillin'. Coming up next, it's Molto Mario.